UFC Super <laughs> Champion, the baddest man on the planet. I am the heavyweight champion. Junior Dos Santos is for real, folks. I'm the better fighter, and I'm taking my belt back. Junior Dos Santos and Cain Velasquez, world-class athletes, gigantic men with ridiculous power and speed. Big shot! He's hurt! I'm going to beat Cain Velasquez again. Velasquez! Pouring it on! There's nobody better than me, especially Junior Dos Santos. Unbelievable! That was a statement. UFC heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos, rematches with former champ Cain Velasquez, elite lightweight Jim Miller, tests his skills against submission expert Joe Lozon, upset specialist Tim Boach, takes on striking star Costa Filippou, former title challenger Yushin Okami, tries to take out red-hot middleweight Alan Belcher. The countdown to UFC 155 starts now. In November of 2011, in the first UFC event ever broadcast on network television, heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez took on top contender Junior Dos Santos. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. We are live! Both men entered the fight with perfect 7-0 records in the UFC. Their dominance and their distinct styles, Velasquez the relentless warrior, oh, he he oh, Dos Santos the punishing knockout artist, oh. had fans anticipating a war, likely the first of many between the two. Here we go! Watch for the uppercut of Junior Dos Santos. That right hand is vicious. And Kane is working the legs of Junior Dos Santos. Kenny looks for the kick. But the challenger impressively imposed his will. Big shot! It is all over! Junior Dos Santos is the new UFC heavyweight champion of the world! Unbelievable! Does this even feel real to you right now? <laughs> I have no words to say what, what I'm feeling. It's amazing my life, you know. Thank you very much. Kane, this is the first time that you have ever tasted defeat in your career. How you feel right now? Uh, I just want to say sorry to all the fans, um, my family, friends, I disappointed you. I will get this belt back, for sure. You can't be out there waiting for him because he's so fast, he's so powerful. You need to take the fight to him, and I didn't do that. Cain Velasquez was criticized in the first fight for not pushing the wrestling. That said, Cain Velasquez is the type of guy that goes back to the drawing board and learns from his mistakes. I wasn't myself. I didn't go forward and attack him. There's only one thing I can do to, to regain it, and that's get back in the gym, get better, and go back out there and win. That's it. My mom and dad have always just been really hard workers. Going every day into work and putting in long hours. My dad got deported back to Mexico a couple times, and you know, he just had a dream just to live in the U.S., you know, have a better job for himself and raise a family out there. If you want something, it's not gonna come easy, and you need to work hard for it. In May, Kane began the road back. Kane Velasquez, the former champion, against Antonio Bigfoot Silva. 
with the Bigfoot fight, I needed to come back and show people that I, I didn't lose the step or anything like that. I'm still the same guy. Fight! We did notice he likes to kick the body to the legs, so if he did that against us, we were gonna catch it and take him down. And that's what happened. The real question, Mike, is gonna be whether or not Bigfoot can deal with Kane's speed. Once that cut happened, he really couldn't see. I knew I just needed to uh, be a little more active on top. Velasquez is attacking that spot now. When he came back, absolutely wrecked Bigfoot Silva. Hit it is all over! That was a real statement by Cain Velasquez. We saw a Cain Velasquez who's absolutely 100% focused on regaining his top spot as the heavyweight champion of the UFC. That man's ready for another shot at the title. It was Kane's seventh first round victory out of 10 career wins. The fight with Bigfoot, you know, got Kane his confidence back at full strength. Kane showed that he was hungry in that fight. Uh, you know, he, he came out like you let a wild animal out of the cage. He went out there and gobbled him up. Since Kane's lost to JDS, his mind has been strong. He knows what he needs to do. He knows what he did wrong. The rematch with uh, Dos Santos, that's all I was thinking about. As soon as I won, I got up, and I just I want that fight with JDS. And he's prepping himself up to get his title back because he doesn't feel the same without it. There's something missing in my life. I got myself into this sport to be the best, and I'm out there right now. And there's one guy I have to go through to, to be that. Last spring, heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos was preparing for his first title defense against former Strike Force champion Alistair Overeem. But Overeem's failed drug test landed Dos Santos a new opponent, two-time former UFC champ Frank Mir. Junior Dos Santos, Frank Mir. I think I did a good game plan against uh, Frank Mir. Frank Mir drop hook guard. Couldn't get him. He's really good on the ground, and my intention in that fight was to keep the fight standing with him. Good left hook by Joe Santos. Big shot to the bottom. Big right hand by the champion. Mir in a world of trouble. So when he fell down to the ground, I let him go and back to the fight standing. Wow! Every fight starts off on the feet, and Junior Dos Santos aims to keep those fights on the feet. The second round, I could see he was feeling my punches. Again, he caught him big time. He says, get up. When I back up, he was very dizzy. Just his second time fighting for the championship. Big right hand. Dos Santos. And it is all over. And still, the undisputed. It feels great to defend my title once. And what I want is to keep my belt as long as I can. To do that, Junior has ventured beyond his humble home gym in Salvador to the state-of-the-art Corinthian sports complex in Sao Paulo. Corinthians is a big soccer team here, but it's also a, a big club here. They have a lot of different kinds of sport here. Now they have MMA too, so I'm doing this first part of my camp here in Sao Paulo because they have uh, a lot of good things to offer. Vamos lá. Sempre traz uma diferente, né? O esporte tá sempre evoluindo. Estamos sempre buscando mais, nunca tá bom. Aí. I have to take care of my training and I'm doing this here. I don't think I'm an overconfident guy. My dream was to become a champion, and now my dream is to break records. I want to break all the records that I can. I believe this is the golden age of the heavyweight division in the UFC. Big shot! He's a big right hand by Junior Dos Santos! You're seeing in a guy like Junior Dos Santos, a guy who's got the footwork and the sprawl and the takedown defense of a welterweight. The power, though, is a heavyweight power. 
Cain Velasquez has never had an MMA rematch, but he had plenty of them as a Division I wrestler. If you lost in wrestling and you had a rematch, you kind of knew what you did wrong in the first one, and you improved it, and it'd be a tougher match. This time, I'm gonna go in and fight him. I'm not gonna wait around for him. This time, I'm going to put the fight to him. Oh, he's he's in! He's watching the body! Cain Velasquez looking to finish Brock Lesnar! Cain has excellent strikes. He is very technical. This is boxing, his kickboxing, his knees, his elbows, his punches. Velasquez averages more significant strikes per minute than anyone in the UFC today. But where Junior has the advantage is the one-punch concussive knockout blows. And that is a big, big advantage for Junior Dos Santos. Dos Santos is He's out. He's out. He's out. Velasquez is putting on a stand-up clinic here, Mike. He comes forward all the time, but I like to fight against opponents that attack me a lot. Dos Santos with a combination, either with the counter. Keen knows that there's a danger there. He knows that he's got to respect Junior's power, and he's got to go get him. Oh, look at that oh, 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 oh. down! Velasquez looking to finish! It is all over! That's the moment I want to enjoy. He comes closer. I will throw my punches, and I think I have knockout power to finish him in that point. The champ has nine career knockdowns, most in heavyweight history. Junior has all the weapons, but really prefers to throw punches. But the challenger lands more strikes per minute than any fighter ever. I mean, he is relentless with the pace he sets. Cain Velasquez, he has to avoid the big power shots, and he has to push the wrestling aspect in this fight. He has to get on top of Junior Dos Santos and rough him up. He has to do things that we haven't seen anyone do to Junior inside the octagon. Velasquez has the highest takedown percentage amongst heavyweights in UFC history. Another takedown by Cain Velasquez. But only one man has been on his back for less time than Junior Dos Santos. Junior would love to stand and train. Going out there, taking him down, finishing him um, on top of, would be the ultimate thing for me. But he has great takedown defense. I think he's going to try to take me down and use his ground and pound against me. He's really good in that area. Velasquez is overwhelming on the ground. But I think I have pretty good wrestling skills. Frank Mir drop, pull guard, couldn't get him. It's hard to take me down and I come back to my feet very fast. Junior Dos Santos' takedown defense is absolutely outstanding, Mike. We can expect for him to stand up again, and then we gotta fight in our feet, so we gotta be ready everywhere. For Cain Velasquez, push the pace, push the wrestling, get Junior Dos Santos tired, and make this a grueling, grinding contest. Velasquez is wearing him down. Yeah, and dominating him. For Junior Dos Santos, the key to victory is do what he's done in every single UFC fight. Keep the fight standing, utilize his superior boxing, and his vicious knockout power. Junior Dos Santos with another knockout victory! I really think I'm gonna knock him out again. I think it, it's gonna be a little longer. You know, maybe at the second or third round, but I think I'm gonna knock him out again. I'm gonna win this fight because I feel like I'm the better guy. I want that belt back. That man's ready for another shot at the title. Junior Dos Santos, Kane Velasquez for the heavyweight championship. Coming up. I like making grown men bigger than me swear because I cause the pain. Oh, quick hands by Jim Miller. I don't think Jim Miller will try and take me down. He's got the arm. Looking for the finish. He's got it. And later. A lot of my opponents counter something they're not used to and start fighting. Tim Boats. Our whole back of the team, Boach out. Everybody will be like, who is this guy? UFC 155 will feature a high-energy lightweight war between two fighters that have earned a combined 15 knockout, submission, or fight of the night bonuses. Joe Lozon just bringing it on! He's got the arm. Looking for the finish! He's got it! It is all over! I hate to see this. 
I would rather know at the end of the night that I was a better fighter than that guy was a better fighter. That wasn't just winning. I mean, that oh. was just demolishment. Why am I gonna train for three months for three people who probably don't even train to pick me as a winner? I don't care about that. Miller pushing forward. Yeah. Nice combination. And then it's Jim Miller blocks up the submission. Jim Miller! I like some people out. I, I really enjoy it. I like making grown men bigger than me swear because I cause them pain. I think Jim has a Napoleon complex. Um, you know, he likes to make people scream and he likes to hurt people. I grew up with two older brothers and a younger sister. We'd always play like a free-for-all rugby and stuff like that, and I was always the littlest, um, so I never really won. <laughs> I was four years old, you know, on the wrestling mats and, and trying to trying to do the things that my older brothers were doing. I ended up winning districts twice, winning regions once, and placing in the state. I wrestled the Virginia Tech, and I did all right. It was one of those things that, you know, I needed to wrestle. I had to do it. It's, it's who I am, and it's definitely helped me be successful in the octagon. Use your body, push, pull, underhooks, move them around, manipulate. Dan and I get into MMA just because we were basically bored with work and destruction all day and, and just going home and really not doing anything. We started training. Within about two and a half months, we did a grappling tournament and we both did pretty well. And then three months later, we were inside of our first ring, you know, fighting for the first time. We signed with the UFC in, in 2008. Dan Miller! He keeps playing! Holds him down! It was special to me to be taking that step with him as well. Both of these Miller kids are tough, Jim and Dan. Jim Miller! Let's go, Dan goes to kick it. Oh, oh he's going to use it for the takedown. Miller, the former Virginia Tech wrestler. My debut against David Barron in Birmingham was at UFC 89. Oh, he's got his back. He's rolling over his back here. Oh. Big left and right to side control. I set a record on the copy strike for the dominant positions because I was all over him. Kick it again, Miller gets him down and into side control immediately. Finally, in the, in the third round, I was able to, to lock up the rear naked and, and get the submission. He's got it deep, here. Mike. That's deep, that's it. It is all over! I took on the, the submission tonight, and it was $40,000, which was huge money compared to uh, anything that I, that I had made previous. Miller just a furious pace. Oh, he is just going off. Wyman just trying to survive. I was lucky enough to take the fight of the night in my second fight, which got me another $30,000 that, that I wasn't supposed to make. Jim Miller, ladies and gentlemen! Oh, oh he rocked, rocked him. him! Quick hands by Jim Miller! From July of 2009 to March of 2011, Jim won seven consecutive fights. He's got it! He got it! It's all over! Including an upset of the previously undefeated Charles Oliveira. White trunks for Oliveira, red for Miller the southpaw. He was 13 and 0, something like that, and finished everybody. And Oliveira attacking from his back. His technique is brilliant in the way he moves. A lot of people were counting me out. A lot of people were actually asking me if I was afraid of him on the mat. Now he's attacking the leg, crazy busy. That, that kind of kind of fired me up. He just chains one thing into the next. Miller's going for a leg lock. Big shots to the body. Jim's got a leg lock. It is all over. It is all over. A year later, he scored another upset. Touch it up, let's make it official. You know, my fight with Melvin, he clipped me pretty good, you know, early in the fight. And Miller goes down. Miller is hurt, got caught with the left hook as he tried to get in, and there's another knee. You know, everything kind of went into instinct mode. Miller is in a very good position here, trying to crank the neck. He can't, oh, there it is. And Jim Miller, despite the early onslaught from Galar, locks up the submission. I like some people out. I, I really enjoy it. I, you know, that's that's the excitement for me in, in, in fighting. Jim Miller! He's capable of beating everybody in the division, uh, finishing everybody in the division. If he's on, you know, there's nobody better than him. Just teeing off all night long. Everything is connected for Jim Miller. I want to go in and I want to dominate people and do what I know I'm capable of doing. 
If I do that, then I'm going to be really happy. Joe Lozon always comes to fight. He's extremely tough. Every time he gets in there, he brings it. It's going to be a spectacular contest. In August, Joe Lozon went to war with former WEC champion Jamie Varner. Lozon, good job of covering up. Oh, nice good body shot. Ripped that left hook to the body. He put me down twice. The first time he put me down, I was out of position. My feet were under me. I didn't have good base. Look at that. There's that power double by Jamie Varner. Knocked over and popped right back up. He's going to try to sweep him with that leg, and then he does. The second time, he definitely rocked me a little bit. Joe Lozon. Oh! Jamie clipped him. But I was completely conscious the entire time. Elbows now by Varner. You gotta give me five minutes. Five minutes. When he came back after the second round, I said, you know, you gotta go and get this kid. And he said, I got him. I got him. Jamie Varner tends to shoot a lot of head inside doubles. Joe drilled extensively. Blocking out the head inside double, using crackdown sweep to flip over Jamie Varner. Joe's gonna sweep him. Uh -oh. Very nicely done by Joe Lozon. And as he came to the top, Jamie posted like a wrestler would do to come back to the top, leaving a big opening for Joe to slide his leg through and hit a triangle. Who's Joe's getting... gonna sweep him. He's gonna sweep him. Uh -oh. Very nicely done by Joe Lozon. Triangle. He's got secure. He's gonna get that right foot into the knee. He's got it. Now he's got it. It was the 18th submission of Lozon's career. All 22 of his career wins have been finishes, and his 11 bonuses rank second in UFC history, behind only Anderson Silva. That's what's gonna keep you in the UFC. That's what's gonna keep you on TV. That's what helps build new gyms. I'm glad I can put some of the bonus money I've gotten over the years towards a new gym. You know, I spent like $20,000 in mats. Uh, you know, which would normally make me cry, but uh, it's a good investment. You know, it's, it's the match I'm gonna have for a long time. This new gym is awesome. It's excellent. He could never have this gym if he didn't finish all those finishes. Joe has finished everybody that he's beaten. I've also fought guys in the past that finished everybody they beat. They didn't last two minutes with me. Jim's got oh, it! Is is I plan on using Joe's aggressiveness against him. I'm very good at capitalizing on guys being aggressive and taking risks. He drops down for a single and takes Shala Roos down. He's got his back. Look at that transition. Trying to finish this fight. Man, that was beautiful. Jim Miller is aggressive. You know, he comes out banging. He's happy. He's taking people down and beating them up. He's great at catching submissions. Can he get the arm bar? Looking for the submission. He's, He's got, got it. it. He got it. It's all over. Wow. I know I can sub out anyone on the planet. If I can wrap my arms around their neck and choke them out, then I'm, I'm going to be really happy. I think Jim Miller and I are both in the same level of grappling, but I feel like we attack differently. Jim is very slow, muscles things a little bit, he stays very, very tight. I am all speed. You know, I hit people, and I swarm people, and I, I lock on things. Lozon looking for the finish! If he takes it out, it's going to be upset. Oh, Warburton's in all sorts of trouble. Warburton just holding on. He's got to turn it Very nicely done by Joe Lozon. If I feel that I can take him down, I'm going to take him down. He might be playing with fire, but uh, he's going to have to deal with me, too. Nice uppercut. Charlie was maybe hurt. Nice knee. Charlie was looking to finish his fight. I don't think Jim Miller will try and take me down. No, I think he's gonna try and stand there and box me the whole time. I have the advantage of striking. I'm a better boxer, I'm quicker. Good clinch and knees by Joe Lozon. Joe Lozon looking sharp. He's got a very good striking style. He's very long. I believe that he hits pretty hard, but uh, I plan on just coming right down the pipe and bowling him over. Teeing off all night long. Yeah, so Miller's far. just landing some big shots. Oh, he is just going off. <laughs> I think it's going to be a super competitive fight no matter where it goes. I think that one of us is going to hurt the other person with a punch, an elbow, something, and then we're going to capitalize. Good body kick. Oh, oh. Got him. Body kick by Miller, and he's got the guillotine again. It'll probably be fight of the night. These two guys have motors, and they come forward, and they never stop. Rose on, pounding away on Kyle Bradley. Continuing That's the finish. It. it is on. Nothing bad can happen in this fight. I'm gonna have the time of my life from bell to bell. Oh! Big one tan on the aggressive is Miller. Miller with a good knee to the midsection. I'm playing.
plan on the take home uh, sub or a knockout. I plan on causing a lot of pain and making it quick. Oh, so this is a war now! This has got Fight of the Night written all over it. Both Tim Boach and Costa Filippou enter UFC 155 riding four fight winning streaks. It's a huge honor to fight Tim Boach. After the Okami fight, I was so impressed with that guy. He was getting his ass kicked. The guy walks in like the Terminator and knocks Okami out. Uppercut again! Whoa! That might be one of the greatest comebacks in the history of the UFC! I love this fight. It's a wonderful matchup. This is going to be a good one for the fans, and I'm really excited to be part of it. Beating Team Boach, uh, I'm going to make everybody know my name. They're going to have to pay attention. Born on the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean Sea, Costa Filippou began boxing when he was 15. I have um, 87 amateur fights and three professional fights. My biggest accomplishment was a bronze medal in a European championship in Turkey in 97. At 25, Filippou moved to the U.S. to study MMA. Four months later, he made his pro debut. And I went in as a boxer. I didn't even know uh, how to sprawl. I walked in and uh, the first thing that I did was to attempt to throw a low kick. He picked me up and threw me on my head. <laughs> that was the last kick I threw. <laughs> I think it took me three, four fights to, throw, to attempt another kick. I came back to the gym and I said, uh, put boxing aside for, for six, seven months. Let's wrestle every day, let's do jiu-jitsu every day. And, uh, we go back and try again. My next fight, I won the fight by a knockout, like 30 seconds into the fight. Costa trained his ground game with former UFC champion Matt Serra and Ricardo Almeida, and also worked to refine his boxing skills for MMA. Hey! Move, nice. Ray Lang was in charge, obviously, of uh, my striking. His hands were great. He was a good boxer, and he was a, a decent kickboxer. Coming from a boxing uh, background doesn't mean that you'll be able to box as a, a mixed martial artist. You have to switch a lot of things. I had to learn how to use more of my footwork and throw one or two, three punches and move away. Costa won seven straight fights and earned an invitation to season 11 of The Ultimate Fighter. So that was it. This is my first and only chance of getting in the UFC. The first 32 guys that they have to fight and the 16 guys that they win get in the house. I didn't make it through that round. Left Vegas, came back thinking I will never make it in the UFC. Took a couple of months off, depressed, out of my mind. I didn't know what to do. Then he got a surprise phone call. Nick Catone needed an opponent at UFC 128. Despite having only five days to prepare, Costa jumped at the chance. Gentlemen, begin. My goal was to not get finished, not get stopped. Don't get smeared, don't get knocked out. Oh. Good exchange. Go home, get in shape, and show them I get. Very short left hook there by Philippu. I learned a lot of things. It was the first time I took an elbow to the face. Guitar trying to really rough him up. Oh, he opened him up. I learned how that felt. And I have to say it wasn't really bad. Besides the blood, it was a painful. Five months later, against dangerous veteran Jorge Rivera, Costa got a second shot. Oh, he got clipped with the uppercut. I dropped Jorge the second round. I got him with an uppercut, went down. He got clipped there, he got and he got hurt. Philippou trying to finish this fight. Very close fight. I won by split decision. Costa Philippou. Following fight, I went to Toronto. I fought Jared Hammond, dedicated myself for three, four months, striking, striking, striking. My oh, he got clipped again, big, big oh, again, and again. Oh, that's it, that's and it, that's it. it. I knocked the guy first round, and it was probably the best moment of my life. Last March, Costa challenged Court McGee, who'd won the Ultimate Fighter the season that Costa had failed to reach the house. Let's do it. He tried to take me down, I think 11 takedown attempts. 
Alex McGee would like to get the takedown, but then having a hard time getting his hands. He wasn't able to take me down, so I managed to beat the winner of season 11, the season that I wasn't able to get in because I wasn't good enough. In last July, I fought in Vegas against Ricky Fukura, another great wrestler. There's a shot under. Look at that. Stuffed. I won that fight too. Only four years after taking up the sport, Costa Filippo has an opportunity to take out one of the division's elite. If I don't believe I can win and I can do this sport, I wouldn't even train. Hey, 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 hey. If deep down you believe that you shouldn't be there and you don't deserve to be there, you don't have the skill set to be there, you shouldn't, you're in the wrong business. Work behind a desk. I find it easier to get punched in the face than being behind a desk. If I didn't believe I was uh, able to become a UFC champion, I wouldn't be fighting. Both seems very solid. And very relaxed. Yeah, especially considering the fact that he took this fight on short notice. Tim Boach took his first UFC fight on just 10 days notice as an underdog to veteran David Heath. Again with those knees. David Heath covering up, but he's, he's absorbing the impact of these knees, and that's doing some damage. Right knee, left oh, knee. Oh, oh, and he literally throws him on the ground. I TKO'd David Heath right at the end of the first round after throwing him on his head. Tim Boach wins his UFC debut. And that's one of the most famous throws in the UFC today. After beating the odds against Heath, Tim struggled in two of his next three fights and was released from the UFC. He decided to expand his training beyond his small town in Pennsylvania. My manager told me I needed to go check out this camp in Kirkland, Washington called AMC with a coach by the name of Matt Hume. Pressure on his wrist right there. Your left hip pressures down on his wrist. Most fighters don't have someone who can build them as grapplers, strikers, wrestlers, put it all together at the same time. They have to go to individual coaches. Combinations, there you go, don't hesitate. And I can train guys how to put those things together. And so that's kind of where Tim was missing it. Let your right leg come over his, so you pass to the side. Keep going, keep going, keep going, there you go. As soon as I came out here and started training with Matt, it was like a light being switched on. Matt just took my kind of raw, brutal style, tweaked it a little bit, and certainly it's improved tenfold. Drive the knee through, there you go. Under Hume's guidance, Tim returned to the UFC and is 4-0 since moving down to middleweight. Whoa, tries for a hit. Kicking him to the bottom. Very nice uppercut. Tim Bosch is one of the toughest guys in the UFC, period. Yeah. Nice trip. Oh, beautiful. That was stellar. In his last two fights, the Barbarian has become the hype killer. Tremendous round one for Hikami. This is as good as we've ever seen. Absolutely. You can beat this guy, Tim. You've hit him. You just got to hit him more now, yeah. okay? In February of 2012, he derailed highly ranked Yushin Okami in dramatic fashion. Oh, he clipped him! He's got him out! It's Tim Bosch. Tim Bosch with the comeback! Uppercut again! Bosch what trying to finish him! What a comeback! like a Rocky movie, and honestly, it sort of felt like that being part of it. Touch gloves, go back, let's do this. No touch. Didn't even look at him, nope. Five months later, he took on Hector Lombard, undefeated in his last 25 fights, in Lombard's highly anticipated UFC debut. Tim, the Barbarian Bowl! opponents have been looking past me, they're talking title shots, they're talking their next fight. They gotta get through me first before they do any of that. Tim is a well-rounded fighter. Obviously he's coming from a wrestling background, but his last couple of fights, he's striking with everybody. He's kicking like a kickboxer, he's punching like a boxer. Oh, that's a nice him. right hand. A lot of my opponents, I think they encounter something they're not used to when they start fighting. I think I just make people uncomfortable in the cage. Big nice knee by Post. Whoa, tries for a head kick. Kicking him to the bottom. 
very nice uppercut. The guy is a big muscular guy. It's not easy when you get pushed against the fence to get away from a guy like Tim Bosch. So I will try to stay away from the fence if that's possible. I think that my wrestling for MMA is superior to his. Nice, oh, beautiful takedown by Bosch. Tim's got a ground game that people haven't even really seen yet. He's got a very high level ground game. The wrestling of Tim Bosch is so dominant here at 185 pounds. They think that my ground skills are non-existent. They think I'm gonna end up losing this fight because of lack of jiu-jitsu. But I'm um, pretty confident with my uh, jiu-jitsu skills. Close guard, good elbows from the bottom by Philippou. I'm more than capable of submitting somebody. I just choose not to. If I have a choice, I'll get up and exchange and hopefully knock somebody out. Hamilton, big, big, big and trouble. Again, and again. Oh, that's it, that's and it, that's it. And it is all over. Mercifully rescued. Costa Philippou. I think Costa defends a few takedowns as it comes to stand-up fight. And that's where Costa's comfortable. Tim Bosch is going to be able to catch him. Now it's Philippa who's stalking. Oh, he got clipped with the uppercut. I'm going in thinking uh, I'm going to strike with a guy. There's an old saying that my coach used to tell me that always speed beats power. I want to test that. Oh, he got tagged! He got big oh! oh, he got hit hard. Oh, he's hurt so bad. He's shown great stand-up ability. With that being said, I definitely see some weaknesses in there to exploit. Fully intend on doing that. Costa's got some of the best hands in the UFC. His footwork is phenomenal. If Costa can control the range in this fight, he's going to win this fight handily. I think I'll be able to get in and out before he can touch us. Oh, great on that. Good shots there by Philip. And Philip was opening up, Mike. I love this fight. It's, it's a wonderful matchup. This is going to be a good one for the fans, and I'm really excited to be part of it. I'll tell you what, Tim Bosch is an animal. I'm going to turn it into a very high-paced fight and make it ugly. He's a tough guy. I think I'm tougher. So I want to push him to the limits and, and see if he can stay in the fight with him. What power that guy has in his hands. This is the biggest fight of my life. I win this fight, and I'm one step closer to my ultimate goal of, of being world champion. Tim, the Barbarian I will go and try to knock Tim Boge out, try to submit him, try to throw him, try to do anything possible to finish Tim Boge. Constantinos If I finish Tim, everybody will be like, who is this guy? That's what I want to see. I want to see everybody like that. In August of 2006, future Hall of Famer Chuck Liddell made his third consecutive defense of the UFC light heavyweight title, knocking out Babalu Sobrell in the first round. Liddell with an uppercut! Caught Babalu! Oh, oh he's, he's hurt, hurt him! Bad. Now he's, he's hurt again! Could be over here. Liddell trying to finish it quickly! Team oh, up is Liddell! And it's all over! And wow. it's all over! The card also featured a rematch of the fight that helped launch the sport, with Forrest Griffin again defeating Stefan Bonner. Forrest's hands are much sharper. And competent too, and it seems like he's catching Bonner off guard every time. Forrest Griffin! And the night kicked off with a face-off between two men making their UFC debuts. 22-year-old Alan Belcher and 25-year-old Yushin Okami. Debut Alan Belcher. Belcher, known for his stand-up, Okami likes the ground and pound. He would like to bring this fight down to the mat. He's got the over-under. This is a bad spot for Belcher. Alan Belcher, now he's pushing forward. Belcher scored the move of the night. Oh, great move by Belcher! He's smiling, look at him. Oh, straight left again. But lost a unanimous decision. Yushin Okami! Okami won nine of his next 11 fights. There's that power of Okami. Oh, Tanner gets Okami nailed. Okami! Man, he looks good! Oh, oh, oh down and it's right back! And it's over! Ultimately earning a title fight. Okami's a big 185 pounder and he's strong. 
where he's his best is in the clinch. He'll get you in that clinch, he'll get you and put you down on the ground, get that top position and beat you up from the top. Okami's got to take him. You show Okami's mount is death. Watch out, 185, Okami is back and better than ever. Belcher slowly climbed the ranks, mixing athleticism, power, and a dazzling martial arts arsenal. Beautiful elbow. Belcher's Muay Thai looks as good as ever. To score nine wins of his own. He's currently riding a four-fight win streak. His last victory, an eye-opening finish of ground specialist Usumar Palharis. This is a terrible position for Belcher right away. This is not what he wants to do. And Belcher looks like he's out. He's got to keep weight on that leg. And now he get out of there. Belcher goes right to the danger zone that exists within the game of Palharis. Big elbow, big elbow. Big elbow. Hammer fists. Palharis in trouble. really feel like now is the time. I'm on this winning streak. I have to grasp it, and this is the biggest fight of my life. Oh! Oh! oh. Alan Belcher pulls guard, goes for a guillotine. He's got it! It's over! Man, you got to be kidding me! I'm just one or two fights away from that belt. That's what I really want, no matter what it takes. UFC 155. Three middleweight wars. A lightweight battle between bonus chasers. And the heavyweight championship of the world. 2012 goes out with a bang.